This video is a response to Maximum RD's open tag about a console or computer you like but others hate. My response is a pretty obvious choice as this console is quite popular to hate, and it's the Atari Jaguar. The Jag gets a lot of hate in a lot of different ways, starting with the design of the console itself, and the fact that the cartridge slot has no dust cover, and the AV connector in back is just exposed circuitry. These might seem like cost-cutting moves, but I think these design choices were made to allow the predatory power of the Jaguar to flow more freely. The controller is also much maligned, typically due to its size and the presence of the numeric keypad. Now, of course, everyone is different, but I find the controller to be very comfortable to hold and use. And while the keypad was a curious throwback to early 80s controller design, I'm not sure why it's so objectionable except for being kinda goofy. It's actually useful for games like Iron Soldier and Doom for choosing weapons, and for games that don't use it, it's not like it gets in the way somehow. The big problem with the controller is having only three main buttons, but Atari did later on release the Pro Controller with six red buttons and two shoulder buttons. This should have been the standard controller from the start, but nonetheless it exists, and I find both models to be nice to use. Then there's the CD attachment, which includes the great virtual light machine, which was and is a lot of fun to play around with. But here again, the design has a bad reputation. Since the 90s, people have observed that the Jaguar-Jag-CD combo looks like a toilet, and while I agree that it does, why is that a bad thing? If you have a Jaguar with CD drive on hand, now you no longer have to take all your consoles out at night to poop, assuming they're toilet trained. But I suppose the biggest reason people hate on the Jaguar is the game library. Typical observations are, this not 64-bit games. Club Drive? Ha ha ha. OMG, Super Nintendo craps all over the Jag. Or the standard, Tempest 2000 is the only good Jag game. OMG 64 crap. Now, I can't say those arguments are totally without merit. If you had purchased the Jaguar when it was released, I would guess that the limited number of games available plus the long wait times between releases could have been pretty frustrating, especially with the enormous amount of games for the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. But we're well past that time now, and have the luxury of viewing the Jaguar's library more objectively. Yes, there are bad games, but you don't have to own them. And the amount of good games is actually pretty large considering how small the library is. Tempest 2000 is generally thought of as an excellent game. People will also acknowledge Alien vs. Predator as well. Of course, everyone has different tastes, but there are quite a number of other high-quality games like Iron Soldier, Doom, Wolfenstein 3D, Rayman, NBA Jam, Power Drive Rally, and Raiden that I think have broad appeal among gamers. And there's a lot more fun games to be had like Super Burnout, Missile Command 3D, Attack of the Mutant Penguins, Brutal Sports Football, Cannon Fodder, Zool 2, uh, CD games like Battle Morph or Hover Strike Unconquered Lands. And of course, at the very end of its lifespan, great games were released like Iron Soldier 2, Breakout 2000, and Zero Five, and these were actually available at certain EB game stores. And of course, releases have continued to appear since then like Protector or Superfly DX. And this isn't even a complete list of games that I've enjoyed on the Jaguar. I know not every game is for everyone, but when I look at the amount of fun games I've played on the Jag, I can't help but think the library is actually quite good, especially considering the difficulties with Atari at that time. But even beyond all the things I've mentioned already, there is a more personal reason why I will always like the Jaguar. It's actually responsible for getting me back into gaming. Now there is no deep emotional story to be told here. It's really just a tale about the convergence of nostalgia and cheapness. But nonetheless, this is how the Jaguar renewed my interest in games. As a kid, I played Atari 2600, and then when we got an 800XL, that became my gaming machine. Uh, later on, I was lucky enough to get an NES, and while I did enjoy it, I was kind of getting out of games at that point for various reasons. Uh, so really, the end of the NES era and basically the whole Super Nintendo Sega Genesis era didn't really happen for me. 
I, I knew they existed and was vaguely aware of other machines being released like the Sega CD or 3DO, but I never played any of them. But I did continue to have nostalgic feelings towards Atari, and in 1997 I was looking around online and, long story short, read that all the Atari Jaguar stuff was being liquidated at KB Toys. For those not in the U.S., uh, KB Toys was, well, a toy store, and you'd normally find them in shopping malls. I actually never liked that place, even as a kid. I always thought it was just, well, everything just seemed bright red and pink, and noisy. Just very loud and noisy on the eyes and ears. But they had the Jaguar, at the incredible price of $30. And games and controllers were like $10, though I know I got some for 5 later on. I didn't know much about the Jaguar, but I kept reading about it and the games. Uh, people seemed to really like Tempest 2000, and I thought, for this price, just go get one. So I went down to the local KB Toys, and there they were. Uh, right towards the front of the store, there was a pile of Jaguar consoles and a good selection of games. It was like a black oasis amidst the sea of pink hideousness. They even had a little TV setup with a Jaguar connected playing Pitfall, I think. It was a pretty good setup overall, and if you didn't know better, you might have thought that this was some new item, rather than the last gasp of a once great company. So I played it a little bit, and it seemed fine enough, and I grabbed a console, and not Tempest 2000. Nope, instead I chose Dino Dudes and Supercross 3D. I'm not sure why. I think I thought the motorcycles looked cool, and I probably thought Dino Dudes was a platformer, and I figured that I could just get Tempest 2000 another day. So I brought it all back home and hooked it all up, but my TV only had the old RF connector, uh, so I used the included RF box, and it was terrible, uh, with a lot of static and interference on screen. Uh, worst RF signal I think I've seen from a console. And the games were not the impressive experience I had hoped for after not really gaming for many years. I kind of wondered, is, is this it? Uh, that was, of course, my fault for choosing those games, but anyway, I went back, and got Tempest 2000, and everything changed. Of course, the RF signal was still bad, but this game managed to shine through it all. I was blown away by the amount of stuff happening on screen, and the colors, and the awesome music too. And once I got used to moving around with the D-pad, it, it played great. This was the kind of leap in gaming I was hoping for. And of course I was hooked and had to go back again and get more games, and another controller, and it just continued from there. It really was the perfect time to get into the Jag because of how cheap most everything was. Besides KB Toys, I remember Tiger Direct had some good prices on game packs as well. Now, the last releases that happened later that year, like Iron Soldier 2, were at a typical full price for a new game. But besides that, it was a really cheap console to get a ton of stuff for. And after getting into the Jaguar heavily, I became more interested in gaming in general. Uh, the next year I got a PlayStation, and then a Saturn, which was also a great source of cheap games and hardware at the time. And it just went on and on from there, and continues to this day. If the Jaguar had never been liquidated like that, I would bet I would have gotten into gaming later on. But who knows when? With the PlayStation 2, maybe? The Wii? I, I have no idea. But luckily for me, nostalgia and thrift are a powerful combination, and so with the Atari Jaguar and all the fun it provided, my interest in gaming began anew. And that's why, despite all the hate, I'll always have good feelings towards the poor, maligned Atari Jaguar. <laughs>